Hi, welcome to Diecast QT. I'm QT and this is the Shop Truck Challenge arranged by Deep Junk Garage. And the model I've chosen to use is the 62 Chevy, which was the basis of my previous shop truck build, but I'm taking this in a different direction. This time I'm going to be combining it with the box from one of these old matchbox four delivery trucks. So I'll start out as usual by drilling the posts and tapping a thread into which I put an M2 hex screw. This model's got two of those. And then I'll go about measuring out the box section that I'm going to be cutting away. Apologies for the flickering on this video. Uh, it's caused by my new LED lighting rig, which I only realized was the cause towards the end of the video. Viewer discretion is advised. Please don't be disturbed by the cutting up of an old model. I've got six of these and this is the one that's in the least restorable condition. As you can see, I broke one of my cutting discs doing this, sitting there on the uh, cutting mat. So now I'll go about fitting it to the Chevy. It's already reasonably good, but the uh, front needs cutting out to fit the cab. So I roughly mark it out with pencil and then go about cutting away the metal to get a better fit. So the way I go about doing this is just cut away some, test it, cut away some more, test it, and keep doing that until it fits. I highly recommend these um, snap-on cutting discs from Dremel so much easier. I know what you're thinking, why the one black glove? Well, it's not because I like Michael Jackson, it's because I've been handling hot metal. Now just filing off the rough edges. taking away quite a lot of that front section. But the end result was a snug fit. So now I can go about taking off the paint. Regular viewers will know that I use Dettol as my paint removal method, which as you can see has the same result as paint stripper, it just takes a few hours more. But if you're in a hurry, it's really effective and really quite cheap. But you can reuse the desol over and over again. As you can see, the paint just falls off. So after a bit of a bath in warm soapy water, that's what we end up with. And now we use our wire brush on the Dremel to get rid of all the oxidation and even out some of the uh, bodywork. Once we're done with that, 
just drawing out this new um, metal polish I've got. The thinking being that you know if it's shiny, it's, it looks good, you know. Quite effective and it shows up any pitting and things as well, so I might continue to do it. After a bath in boiling hot soapy water, this is what we end up with. And next I glue that box section onto the back of the Chevy. And then mix up some Millie Putt to fill in some of the gaps in the bodywork. So I'll just smooth that on with a wet finger. Then we leave that to harden. Then we can fix the broken roof section snapped as I took the model apart, but well, keep getting fixed with some CPU. I'll be sanding it a bit afterwards so a little bit of excess doesn't matter. So now we're on the wheels. Um, the wheels were the hardest part of this entire project. Um, I had some green light wheels lying around which were a bit too small for the purposes here so uh, I decided to stick with the original Hot Wheels ones, but I didn't like the purple because it wasn't in keeping with the colour scheme I had in mind. So I got out some of my donor wheels from another one I was working on, um, which were in keeping with the uh, colour scheme. And I'm planning on um, lifting this the same way I did with my other shop truck because all of these um, Chevy ones have kind of slammed to the ground and I don't really like the look so much, particularly for this kind of thing. So the thinking there is to move the wheels from their sunken position underneath the chassis to raise them back up again, which requires cutting out some channels to fit the axles into. Now the difference between the Hot Wheels axles and the green light axles is that Hot Wheels axles are, the wheels are kind of stuck on them so to get them more can easily cut the axle um, and I like to use axle tubes which is useful for the green light ones because the axles are separate from the wheels on that you just push the axle through the tube and then put the wheels on the end um, with these not so simple so I had some milliput left over from the bodywork fixing it as you can see um, and thought I'd just fix them in place with those, the wheels can still spin on the axles even as the axle is stuck in place. So my plan was to just pretty much secure them in place with Milliput, um, which would have been fine, but once the Milliput had dried I realised that the um, front wheels weren't in the right position and were getting stuck on the bodywork even after I'd shaved off some of the uh, extra plastic on the base there. Um, so I ended up getting rid of the Millie putt on the front axle and replacing it with a combination of an axle tube and a replacement axle made out of a 1mm tube which I then pushed the uh, original hot wheels wheels onto and then dulled the ends so that they stayed in place. I didn't record that because I was having an absolute mare trying to put that together. Um, and fiddling with the camera as well was not going to be conducive to a good mood. So you can just watch me doing the mini pump first attempt. There's the hardened bodywork there, um, but I need to leave it to harden a bit more before we can carry on. While that's happening, I turn my attention to the window. Now this window section was a replacement from another model, much like the wheels, um, because the original one that came with the black one was pink, and I hate the pink. I've got a growing collection of pink windows from these Chevys. Um, so the brown was the least offensive one, and was kind of in keeping with the um, land colour scheme. 
So I worked through the grits from 400 to 3000 to get all the scratches out of the window. And then once we've gone through all the grits, give the usual fit into some lead revive it to get a nice shiny sheen at the end. So once the roof section had dried, we can now glue that in place onto the main body. On the original matchbox truck, those red clips on the side there held it in place, but as they have nowhere to sit within this model, they've been cut away, glue is the only option. So I'm going to lay down some fine surface primer in white, just a couple of coats on this to, to uh, show off any uh, inconsistencies in the bodywork. I'm particularly interested in seeing how the belly part looks, which as you can see it's got some kind of ridging on there which I'm not particularly happy with. So I'll get out one of my uh, diamond dust files and just even out just to get rid of some of that uh, rippling because I'm planning on putting decals on there and I don't want them to kind of look uneven. So once I've got out the uneven sides, I've got some uh, sandpaper even out a bit. Um, with hindsight, I probably should have used a finer grit sandpaper because the, um, the lines inside are still visible through the uh, decal in the final model. Uh, but yeah, too late now. So after this I lay down some uh, more primer and then we can move on to the uh, paint. And for the paint I've decided on a two-tone. Um, so I had to mask out most of the vehicle for the first half. Paint the lower half first, then mask that out and then paint the other half. So the lower half is going to be in X8 lemon yellow with the X2 white. As you can see I've mixed up a kind of uh, yellowy cream. Um, I want it to pop but not too much. And I've not used my airbrush for a month because I've just moved house and set up a new workshop. Um, as such the settings in the airbrush are all out of whack and it took me quite a while to sort of get it working again um, hence why it's taking forever for this paint to go on but layer after layer it does suddenly pop at a certain point with that cream I was after. For the top half I'm going for a metallic green. So I've got some X15 lime green and some X11 chrome silver. Mix them together. More traditional but with a hint of bling. So I masked off the bottom. I left a one or two mil overlap so that there's going to be a layer of white primer between, or a line of white primer between the green and the cream. I wasn't sure how that was going to turn out, but there's at least kind of two or three layers of prime, primer on there, so it should serve as a white stripe. So the green goes on nicely, um, and it's much nicer than I'd actually thought it was going to come out. So while that's drying, 
I work on the interior. Um, as there's only two small windows on the interior, um, there's really no need to go into a great level of detail on this. I just need to give a general impression that it's not a chrome interior. So I just paint it brown in there. Um, just to take the kind of shiny edge off of it. Uh, two white blobs for headlights. Didn't have my glasses on, so it's uh, fairly rough and ready. Once it had dried, went over with some uh, null oil to add some depth into those kind of plastic chrome grills and bumpers, and to kind of address some of the bleed from the glasses-free headlight painting, and then added some to the exhausts and also added some depth shading to the interior as well. I went back afterwards and touched up some of the visible silver bits with my glasses on <laughs> and added a bit of highlights in there as well. On to decals. Um, these were all custom made decals uh, made to measure in this particular model. Put on some micro set first and then on goes the decal. I'm using transparent paper on this occasion so you can see that the green shows through where the white would have been. If you've seen my ice cream truck build you know that I like these large transparent decals. And I just recorded one of these side decals. Don't have to see them all going on. Uh, SJ's Autos. SJ is my daughter, um, so this build is dedicated to her. And if she wants to play with this truck afterwards, she's more than welcome to. So once I put all the decals on, added three layers of clear coat and we're then ready for the final reveal. All comments well. And thank you to Deep Junk Garage for organising this. It was a fun and interesting build.